The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmed will be the one ruler of the Romans. Christians ignore their daddy. Yes, they do. They do not want to acknowledge their daddy in Christ Jesus. According to 1 Corinthians 4 and 15, it reads, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have become your father through the gospel. Now that is the apostate Paul claiming to be the father. He said that he was the father in Christ Jesus. Ask your pastor, what does that mean? Ask your camp leader, what is that going into? Paul proclaimed to be the father. Not only that, he says it right after Jesus tells us to call no man your father. Now in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the prophet that he is not their father. Jesus says the same thing. Call no man your father. So let's, let's go to Matthew 23 and 1. It reads, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. So if Jesus is speaking to the multitudes, guess what? He is speaking in a parable. Everything Jesus said according to your own Bible was in a parable. And according to your own Bible, there was nothing he said except it was in a parable. So don't take this at face value. There's a hidden meaning in this parable. Go on to verse 2, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, that means carry, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Now, that heavy burden is going into the cross. And according to the Hadith, we know that the Christians will be a sacrifice for the Muslims, for the Hadith reads, God will give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian. And he will say, this is your ransom from the fire. Verse 5, but all their works they do for it to be seen amen. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Now we have brothers in these Israelite camps doing that right now, okay? With the fringes. And we all been there. We all been there. But it's time for us to wake up and understand that your outward appearance does not describe your inner holiness. Okay. Your audio has to be matching your video. Everything you say has to match with your actions going on in verse six. And they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the cheap seats in the synagogue and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi you see the pharisees love this greeting they love this salutation rabbi rabbi verse 8 but be ye not called rabbi for one is your master even christ and all are you brethren so all of you are brethren. Now, Jesus is saying that Christ is the master. Now, this is why I always bring out the parables or the parables, and I bring up the son and the father religion, and I call it Christianity. It is the curse of rebuilding Jericho, and it is the curse of Canaan. Now, watch this father and son religion. Watch this golden calf come out of this parable. Watch this. But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. And all 
of you are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father, which is in heaven. So Jesus' instructions was to not call anyone master and father. See, there that father and son religion. Father and son. Father and son. Now, I believe that Satan has a messenger. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has a messenger. His messenger is the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. But Satan's messenger, okay, was your boy Paul. Now watch this. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. So here we have the golden caps, two of them, okay? The father and the son. The father and the son religion was a false teaching that Israel always believed. Now, let's pause for a minute. And let's go to the book of Micah. This is going to be Micah, chapter 6 and 7. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of ramps or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Now, the prophet Micah is asking God a question. He's saying, should I give up my firstborn son for my sin? Now, if you look that up in other translations, God literally says no. Now, let's pause and let's go to the Bible Hub real quick. And we're going to get that so you can see that God is basically saying, I don't want your firstborn son. I don't want thousands of rivers of oil. I want you to do mercy and I want you to walk humbly before the Lord, your God. So this is going to be Micah 6 and 7. Now let's read the New International Version. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of ramps, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Now let's go to a contemporary English version. Let's break it down. Will thousands of sheep or rivers of olive oil make God satisfied with me? Now, that just answered it for you. Now, you can see that answer is no. Now, watch this. Should I sacrifice to the Lord my God, my firstborn son, as a payment for my terrible sins? Now, this answer is no. God doesn't want a firstborn son for your sins. Okay, he wants you to repent. Now, this was the false teaching of Israel. Now, this same thing is seen in Ezekiel 18 and 9. Now, let's go there real quick. Okay, so we can talk about your daddy that you ashamed of. Paul is your daddy according to the Bible. And amazingly, Christians never talk about Paul being their father. It's like, they ashamed of him. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 18 and 9. And it reads, Have walked in my statutes and have kept my judgments. To deal truly, he is just, he shall surely live, saith the Lord God. Now, that's what God wants. He wants you to walk righteously. Okay? Now, let's go to verse 19. This is what the people wanted. The people had this false teaching that they would sacrifice their own sons for payment of the father's sin. Now, let's get that. This is going to be Ezekiel 18 and 19. Yet say ye, why? Doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father? In other words, why isn't the son paying for the father's sins? Now, this is God's response. When the son have done that which is lawful and right and have kept all my statutes and have done them, he shall surely live. So man's way was, OK, I'm going to give you my son to pay for my sins. But God's way was, no, you live right. You walk right. You keep my commandments and you're going to live. Now, this is God's way for the sinner, for the wicked. Verse 20, the soul that sinneth 
it shall die. That's God's way. If you sin, you're going to die. Ain't nobody else going to pay the price for you. Okay. Now, if you go to Deuteronomy. Uh oh, it got quiet. <laughs> it got quiet in here. <laughs> you can hear a pin drop. Finish him. 24 and 16, you will never ever hear an Israelite camp bring this scripture out. You will never ever hear a Christian bring this scripture out. This is going to be Deuteronomy 24 and 16. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sins. Now Ezekiel is a true prophet. Why? Because he's in line with the head prophet. He's in line with Moses. What he is saying in Ezekiel is exactly what God is saying in Deuteronomy. God is not going to take nobody's son as a payment for your sins. Now, John has deceived you because you didn't fully understand John. John is a parable. There's only one prophet in the Bible whom God spoke face to face with. And that was Moses, the most famous man, even in the Quran. Peace and blessings be upon him. So when we go back to Micah chapter six and seven, let's get some more. Let's go to God's word translation. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with endless streams of olive oil? No. Should I give him my firstborn child because of my rebellious acts? No. Should I give him my young child for my sins? No, God doesn't want that. This is what God wants. It's in the next verse. Six and eight. No, that's in the Bible. It literally says, no, the Lord has told us what is good. What he requires of us is this, to do what is righteous, to show constant love, and to live in humble fellowship with our God. So Micah asked the question. I'm on the mic. I hope you hear me. I'm on the mic. And I'm talking about Micah, the real prophet of God. He asked God a question. He said, should I give my firstborn son for my sin? And God's answer is no. He doesn't want it. That's how you know the Quran is the truth, okay? I don't care how much you hate the prophet Muhammad. I don't care how much you hate that he had Aisha. I don't care how mad you are that he was a warrior and he was a prophet. I don't care that you don't like that his laws is strict. This man was a real prophet, okay? He gave us the most basic and fundamental truth, and that is Christ was never crucified. You know what? God ain't taking no firstborn son. For your sins. And this is in alignment with your own Bible. So make sure you write that down. I'm on a mic. mic, 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 mic okay. Mic, mic, this is going to be Micah 6 and 7 and 8. Write that down. Go spread this word to someone who is ignorant. Okay. Share this verse with your pastor and with your camp leader. Now let's go back to your daddy. Your daddy Paul. Okay. Now Jesus said don't call no man father. He said, don't call no man master. This is going into the two gods. This is going into the false golden calves, okay? Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 4 and 17 because Paul was this man that came on the scene and he was just calling all his people sons, okay? He came on the scene after Christ the man with the hair, the man with the fur. Why fur? Because he called himself the father. Okay. In 1 Corinthians 4, 17, for this cause have I sent unto you, Timotheus, who is my beloved son. Wow. This guy has kids. He doesn't have a wife, but he is this self-proclaimed apostle that is calling the people in this congregation son. Now, let's go and get another one. This is going to be Titus 1 and 4. To Titus, mine own son. Wow. Here we have the man with the fur, the man with the hair, 
This is Pharaoh, okay? This is why God is going to kill Pharaoh's firstborn son. And Pharaoh's firstborn son, metaphorically, is the prophet Esau. You call him Jesus. Peace be upon him. God is going to cause him to die a natural death. This will be the last plague. And after this plague, Pharaoh will thrust you out hence. Christianity is going to be destroyed. Once God destroys the foundations. That's why in the Quran, God says, what if I choose to destroy Christ and his mother? OK, and his mother is metaphorically going into Paul. OK, Paul is associated as a woman. He is jailed. OK, in the book of Judges, the tent peg killer. He is Jezebel in the book of Kings with the letters guilty with the letters. A forgery. He is the prophetess whom Jesus exposed in the book of Revelation who taught us to eat food sacrificed to idols. It was none other than the apostate Paul who taught the church to eat food sacrificed to idols. And the prophet Isa exposed them. Now, sometimes I think y'all read the Bible. And that's why I go fast, because I assume that you Christians have read other books besides John. So let's go to the book of Revelation real quick so you can see Jesus exposing this false apostle who taught the church to eat food, sacrifice to idols. Let's go to Revelation chapter two. Start off at verse one unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Right. These things have he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Notice, he is exposing a church that Paul built. He's exposing the church of Ephesus. Paul built that church. Now look what Jesus says in verse 2. I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars. Now, is there any record in the Bible of anybody else calling Paul an apostle other than himself? No. Even Peter called him a brother. Oh, bless God for Peter. Peter called him a brother and he snuck this. Him. Now, let's go on down. Let's go to verse 14. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak. Balaam is a picture of Paul. That might be over your head right now. Go back to the book of Numbers and read that story, okay? Now let's keep going. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication now who taught us to eat food sacrifice to idols in the new testament it was none other than paul okay it was none other than the prophetess jezebel let's go to verse 20 notwithstanding i have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornications and to eat things sacrificed to idols. I keep telling you, God always exposes Paul as a woman in the Bible. And here the prophet Esau, peace be upon him, is calling him Jezebel. And if you go to the New Testament, there's only one man who taught the church to eat food sacrificed to idols. Now, this is the thing. If you go to the book of Acts, all of the church had counsel and they all made an agreement that the church should not commit fornication and to eat meat strangled with blood and bingo, not to eat food sacrificed to idols. Paul took it upon himself in the book of Corinthians, in the book of Romans to eat food sacrificed to idols. And here we have the prophet Isa exposing that thing. OK, so we have Paul. Constantly calling people in his church son. He called Timothy his son. Now let's get another person whom he called son. This is Philmon. This was the guy he had put out the church. And then he let him come back in the church. This is going to be Philmon. One in ten. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus. Whom I have begotten 
in my bonds. Now that word begotten is going into fathered. That's why if you look up 1 Corinthians 4.15 in the King James, it says father as in begotten. Okay, so begotten you is going into fathering you. And here we have Paul, okay, saying that he is the father of of Onesimus. Now, my question to you Christians, and I won't be long, okay, because the truth is out, okay? The truth is out there. Going against this is like hitting your head up against a wall. You can't do nothing against this truth, okay? You can't refute this truth. Here we have Paul, your father. How come you don't accept him? How come you don't accept Paul as your father? Now, Jesus gave us metaphors in the parables. He said, I am my father is one. He wasn't talking about God. He said, he that honors me must honor me like he honors my father. He wasn't talking about God. He said, he that have seen me have seen the father. He wasn't talking about God. He said, before Abraham was I am. He wasn't talking about God. He was talking about the false Abraham, whom we call Paul. And according to your own Bible, he your daddy. Okay? He, he's your daddy. He's your father. Okay? Where is your reverence for your father? You know, I was talking to a guy in the comments. I went to his channel and I seen a video that I didn't agree with. Long story short, I told him. Paul is the father in Christ Jesus. And this understudied man told me, who told you that? That's what he said. And my response was, your own Bible. Then you know what happened? He got raptured for like three days, okay? They always disappear when the truth come out. They got to think of a huge excuse. And when I posted that, I said, now what's your excuse? What's your excuse for saying who told you that? Okay, all you're doing is showing me that you don't read the Bible. You know, Christians don't really care about the Bible. You know, Christians have Bibles and they just sit on the shelf. Okay, they say they love God with their mouth, but their hearts is far from them. Their Bibles are sitting on the dust. Their Bibles are sitting on the shelf collecting dust. Although they'll tell you how much they love the Lord. Okay? He did not know that Paul is the father in Christ Jesus. Okay? Christians are asleep. Okay? They don't understand what's in their own Bible. So my question to you is, is Paul your father? Do you accept him as your father? And if you don't, do me a favor. Tear that book out of your Bible. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.